Okay, in the last video we introduced the equation which describes the predicted or theoretical gravity at any point on the Earth's surface. Um, it includes all known effects including the normal gravity on the ellipsoid, the free air term, the uh, Bouguer plate, and topography effects, and the effect of tide and drift. So again, this is the predicted or theoretical, and I'll probably use G with a subscript P or T. And it may not be consistent, but we're talking about predicting what the gravity is at a particular point in your uh, survey. Uh, first, uh, you know, I have to uh, go off on a on a tangent, perhaps, but we were talking about the gravitational fields of objects like uh, the small moon of, of Mars, Phobos. And uh, we also talked about Comet 67P. And here it is for scale sitting over Manhattan. Uh, this distance here across the base of this lobe of Comet 67P is about 4.1 kilometers for scale. And we uh, all estimated, or I, I mentioned an estimate of what the uh, acceleration due to gravity was on uh, 67P. And I think actually it's a difficult estimate to make because if you look at the shape of 67P, if you're here on this little connection between these two lobes, you're going to be pulled to the side by the um, uh, gravitational attraction of this lobe and this lobe. And so it's, it's, what I did here was I just assumed that this mass was all concentrated in a sphere, and I think uh, an equivalent uh, sphere had a radius of about 1.63 meters, 63 kilometers, and we got a, an acceleration of 2.46 times 10 to the minus fourth meters per second squared. And you should be pretty good at converting milligal or converting meters per second squared to milligals. If you do, you know you multiply this by um, 10 to the uh, 10 to the fifth milligals per meter per second squared to give you 24.6 uh, milligals. Uh, with this acceleration, it takes 90 seconds to fall one meter. And the escape velocity is uh, just one meter per second. Okay, off on another tangent, I suppose, but we, we did talk about uh, Phobos, and this is the, the crater Stickney. And uh, we mentioned what the escape velocity was for um, uh, 67p. In the case of Phobos, uh, you know, using its mass and uh, uh, assuming an average radius of about 11 kilometers, we get an escape velocity of 11.4 meters per second. Uh, one can run the world record uh, 100 meters in 8.77 seconds, 10.44 uh, uh, meters per second, so not quite good enough to get you off. However, a slingshot would definitely help, uh, and Usain Bolt reaches a peak speed of 12.5 meters per second, so if he could get to that peak speed, he would certainly launch himself into orbit. So, Okay, uh, a couple tangents, but theoretical gravity, uh, the predicted gravity, all these terms, we just mentioned what they, what they are. If we make a prediction and then we make an observation, if the observation and the prediction are the same, then there's nothing going on in the subsurface uh, that, that can't be explained by these, by these features, the, the effects of latitude, elevation, uh, material beneath your feet, and so on. So that, that makes it pretty uninteresting. If there aren't any anomalies, then we don't have you know, we don't have anything interesting going on in the subsurface. Now, the first term, 
is the normal gravity. It's the largest term in the uh, in the expression for the predicted uh, uh, predicted acceleration due to gravity. So this is basically the acceleration due to gravity at points as a function of of uh, latitude. And the normal gravity, you know, if you think about it, it's a function of centrifugal acceleration as the Earth uh, spins around, and also its shape. It's an oblate spheroid, so you're 21.4 kilometers closer to the center of the Earth at the pole than you are at the uh, equator. If we calculate the centrifugal acceleration at the equator, uh, we get um, <clears throat> we get uh, that it, it turns out to be 3,300 milligals. Um, that's a fairly, you know, large uh, value or acceleration um, for geological problems. But just to put it in perspective, if you were subjected to this acceleration, you would fall 0.4 meters in 5 seconds, 1.65 meters in 10 seconds. And the centrifugal acceleration alone is about six times the acceleration of gravity on Phobos. So this is a fairly large influence just, just from the centrifugal acceleration, the spinning of the Earth itself. Um, the normal gravity increases as we go from the equator to the poles. This um, rotation relative to the axis of uh, the Earth this radius gets smaller and smaller as latitude gets higher and higher until eventually uh, it becomes zero at the poles. So, so this 3,300 um, milligauss drops off to zero, uh, the influence of centrifugal acceleration. So again, you weigh less at the equator, more at the poles due to this uh, centrifugal acceleration. And um, at the poles, again, you would just turn on the spot every 24 hours. Um, the normal gravity also incorporates latitude effects and an equation which describes the normal gravity, both the uh, shape of the Earth and the centrifugal acceleration are incorporated in this expression, is referred to as the geodetic reference system formula, um, GRS67. And it takes on this form where you have uh, sine squared, sine to the fourth terms, and your result is in centimeters per second squared. So this constant out here, um, g at the equator, 978.03185. And then, of course, these constants, alpha and beta, or a and b, um, <clears throat> are numbers which generally we don't memorize uh, you know we put those into uh, uh, put those into Excel in order to do a calculation of the normal gravity at any particular point in your survey GRS uh, 67 you know this formula if you take the derivative of the normal gravity with respect to latitude you get an expression like this 1.307 times the sine of two times the latitude and the the constant over here gives you milligals per mile. So you can see that the influences can be fairly significant. If you're off in your estimate of latitude takes you off by a mile, uh, that, you know, at mid latitudes, that translates into about 1.31 milligals or 13.1 gravity units, just to remind you of some different units. Uh, at, at, uh, 40 degrees north latitude, 12.87, uh, 1.29 uh, milligauss, 12.87 gravity units. <clears throat> so it's important to, even in a fairly local area, you know, if, you're, if your um, survey extends, you know, more than a, a few, few hundred feet uh, north or south, then you've got to take into consideration this uh, uh, normal gravity because uh, it's going to, going to change what the expected value of the acceleration due to gravity is in that, uh, in that area.
So, uh, if we take a look at the variations of the equator as we go from the variations of uh, g as we go from the equator to the poles, uh, again, highest acceleration at the equator, 978, uh, up to the poles, a little over 983. Again, these are in gals, centimeters per second squared. Uh, right in here, I think you can see that the gradient is highest at about 1.31 milligals per mile. Here in um, uh, the mid-latitudes, 40 to 50. And uh, the total difference is 5,186 milligals. So, um, again, you know, the, this, these are just the influences, the combined influence of both the shape of the Earth and centrifugal acceleration. And uh, the next time we're going to discuss the free, what we call the free air correction or the free air term, free air effect, which is this term. It's negative because we increase elevation, we decrease the acceleration due to gravity. And then remember we talked about compensating for the material beneath your feet, beneath your observation point, and the datum, whatever datum it is that you're using. And that's usually a two term. Uh, effect, and we divide it up into that of a plate and that of the topographic features superimposed on the plate. So the next time we're going to talk about the free air term and the uh, plate terms in a little bit more detail. Uh, talk to you then. Thank you.